did you want to say bless you? I'm sure you did. That's the most common thing that most people say in America when somebody sneezes. The, the average person sneezes probably less than four times a day. If you're sneezing more than four times a day, you need to see a doctor. Now, according to the CDC, the average life expectancy of men and women, when you combine them, is about 79 years old. If you actually were to sneeze four times a day, that would equal about 1,460 sneezes per year or around 115,000 times in your average lifespan. For argument's sake, let's say a quarter of those occurrences, someone's actually around you to say, bless you. You would actually be told to be less you almost 30,000 times in your life. That means almost every single day of your life, you're being told to be less you, AKA, but less you. E equals MC squared. It's the most famous equation on planet Earth, right? But what does that actually mean? Let me try to break it down for you. So I'm gonna break it down twice because the first time you still may not get it because I still didn't even get it. So E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. All right. Now, on the most basic level, the, the most basic way I can explain that, pretty much what the equation is saying is that energy and mass, AKA matter, like mass, matter, things that you can physically touch, they're interchangeable. They are different forms of the same thing. Everything that you observe with your physical senses is a vibrational interpretation. You're interpreting it we're all vibrational beings living in a vibrational universe, right? So when somebody comes in with negative energy, it's a bunch of people having fun, you can feel their vibe. Like we are vibrational beings. All energy has a vibration. Energy also emits a frequency. The most potent form of energy is thought because thought can actually penetrate time and space. You can think about the past, you can think about the future, you can think about the present, you can think things into existence. So thought is really, really powerful in my opinion. Now, thought has frequencies. We can actually measure thoughts. I don't know if you've ever seen those videos where they like hook stuff up to somebody's head, tell them to imagine winning the race. They win the, like, they win the race in their mind and you can actually see on a machine that there, there's like activity, brain activity, waves. I'm not like an expert on it, but uh, from what I've seen, I feel like we can actually measure thoughts. A lot of people, they don't like to admit that they're vibrational beings living in a vibrational world because when you look in the mirror, you see flesh and bones. So it's very difficult for a lot of people to realize that you're just a bunch of atoms and molecules vibrating at a very high speed of rate, very dense, so dense that it becomes like a physical um, appearance or object to your senses. The reason that you hear is because your ear is actually translating vibrations. You see because your eyes are perceiving different vibrations and you smell because your nose is actually decoding molecules that are giving off a certain vibration that creates a smell, right? Now, for example, just because you can't hear a dog whistle, like that silent dog whistle, like you can't hear anything, right? But the dog hears it. It doesn't mean that the sound's not being emitted. It just means that that sound is being emitted on a frequency that your ears cannot pick up on. Another example, like most animals can see colors in the dark, right? If I turn these lights off in the dark, I can't see anything. I see nothing but shades of gray. A cat, a dog, um, an owl, like so many different animals, they can actually see colors at night because the colors are there. It's just that the way my eyes work, the way your eyes work, we're just not able to translate that vibration how, you know, how we want to. It's, it's not what we were meant to be able to do. Right? But it doesn't mean that it, it's not it's not there. The colors are still there. We just can't translate those vibes. 
And then the last example, those like bloodhound dogs, they can smell something. I watch true crime documentaries. They can smell if there's been a dead body. You ever get pulled over by the cops and they're like, hey, we're gonna do a canine search and the dog is going around, they smelling, they're like, oh, oh, he alerted for the scent of whatever, you know. Dogs have a, an amazing sense of smell. Now imagine, if you repeat the same thought over and over and over again, on a consistent basis, you're emitting it on a certain frequency. Now, words have power, and I really truly believe that words do affect people. You know, the old saying when we grew up, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That's a lie. Words do hurt people, words can affect people. Imagine raising a child and telling him, hey, you can be whatever you wanna be, you can do whatever you wanna do. Um, you're, the, you're awesome, you're loved. Saying those things to a child versus saying, you'll never be nothing, you can't do nothing, um, just pure negative, like curses. Those things will actually affect the outcome of somebody's life. And I truly believe that, I really do. To get to my whole point, because you came to this video to figure out why you should stop saying bless you, right? Well, thought, energy, and language, they connect together in intricate ways. Sounds and language express thoughts. The thoughts that we think and the words that we use truly impact our world. Our words carry a vibrational frequency as well as a creative force. Our thoughts and our words co-create our reality. So everything is created twice. First through thought, then in the physical reality. And I guess if you were to write it down, it could be, you know, like a third way to manifest something. Think it, say it, write it down. Now, everything that you ever held, your phone that you're using to watch this video, your TV, your remote control, everything you've ever held, used or see was first a thought before finding its way into our physical reality. Somebody had to think about this phone. Somebody had to think about the camera. Somebody had to think about every single thing that we've ever done. Somebody had to think about it first. And once they thought about it, people put into action, it became a reality. So don't underestimate the power of thought. Don't underestimate the power of speaking words. That vibration comes out and it actually affects, you know, not only you, but it affects the people that you're speaking to. Let me give you an example of how words that we use in our everyday English language can be effective because I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh, when I say bless you to somebody, it's the right thing to do. It's a, it's an empty tradition. Honestly, you're literally telling somebody to be less you. It may not be intentional, but you're still saying it. All right, so for example, let's say that you're not feeling really well, you're sick, you would say that your body is at dis-ease. And that's how we get the word disease, right? You break down disease, you get dis-ease. Your body's at dis-ease, that's when you get sick. But once you start feeling better, you're eating the right fruits, vegetables, water, you're taking care of yourself, you become healthy. What you did was you healed thyself. Um, words have power, words have meaning. Even if you don't realize what you're saying, it could still affect somebody. So think twice before you tell somebody for the next 30,000 times or 100,000 times in their lifetime to be less them because the English language is filled with spells and riddles and words used to control. All right, so to wrap it up, I hope that made sense. Um, try to stop telling people to be less them and to be more them. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm gonna try to come with more videos you know, as much as I can. I got a lot to say. It's your boy, Mike. Never forget, 99% of people consume and only 1% produce. Go out there and produce something. Again, it's your boy, Mike. I'll holla.